Most hunting shows have lost touch with the average hunter. The hunts are taking place on expensive leases or outfitted hunts that average hunters can't afford. The hunters you see on this show represent the average guy. Hunts take place on public land, the family farm, or a place we knock down the door and ask for permission. We will take you along for the scouting, planning, and then the hunt. It almost seems like a lot of guys are looking for excuses not to hunt. Um, you hear a lot of people say, uh, deer don't move when it rains, deer don't move when it's windy. And if you're uh, one dimensional, that might be true. But uh, there's advantages to every disadvantage. And uh, the one thing I like about uh, rainy days, especially light rain, because nobody likes to be out there in a downpour, especially if you film your hunts. But on a light rain day, you can get away with a lot. Um, when leaves are wet, they don't make noise. Um, you don't make noise when you rub up against brush and stuff. I mean, leaves crunch. And they crunch like you're walking on crackers in the woods. But when it's wet out, they're not. So a lot of times I'm waiting for a rain day to hunt a specific spot because of how close I got to get into the to the bedding area you know and, and not get noticed. On the uh, third day of the season I got a rainy day. I got a light rain and I'd been waiting for that and it, perfect timing. So I did my first public land hunt of the year. I slipped into an area where deer are feeding in some fields and they come out of this bedding area and they go up one tree line, the other tree line, or they go straight out to this field. But they come out and they stage real tight to their bedding. And to get in there you got to make noise unless you've got wet leaves and stuff. And I got to get within 50 yards of those beds. So that rain day was what I needed to get in there. I had the right wind wet leaves. It was a day I was looking for, not looking for an excuse not to hunt. If you look at this map, here's where the deer were bedding, and here's where they stage, and then they go off in this direction, that direction, or straight out to the fields. Here's how I access. Here's where I come in from. Slide in here. And I can get right to this point right here in order to catch those bucks uh, coming out of there. It's really hard to do if you don't have a sound advantage, which I had that day because of the wet leaves.
right now I'm in one of my uh, favorite public land spots. I'm 50 yards from a buck bedding area, a primary bedding area. And uh, I'm away in here. I saw some fresh rubs and uh, a lot of big tracks. So I'm pretty sure uh, somebody's using it. It's just a matter of if they step out. It's the perfect day. It's overcast, been rainy all day, and the rain just broke. Uh, when the rain stopped, I was getting in here, and uh, it's super quiet in here. I had to really go slow. I don't have much for shooting lanes. This is really thick, but uh, I've made it work in the past. I've taken uh, more than a few real big bucks from this very tree. We'll see if anything gets up out of its bed. Got me another one. A whole bachelor group came in. There's still a couple of them over there. Um, the first one had a really weird rack that was in velvet. Um, the second one came running in and uh, looked like a shooter, so I drilled him. Looked like a real good shot. I think he went down I think he's right over there um, but there's still two more coming um, one of them stopped and rubbed the tree and they both just wouldn't come over here now they, they kind of turned around and uh, are leaving I guess we'll get down and see what we got I was hunting one of my favorite uh, little bedding areas. I've shot a lot of big bucks out of that spot. And uh, when I was going in, I noticed that there was uh, pretty decent rubs and uh, real big tracks and a lot of tracks and uh, a lot of brows. And I knew 
there was at least a couple big bucks holing up in that bedding area. I could tell by the sign. There was hot sign coming out of that uh, bedding area, hot fresh sign. Uh, it was raining out and uh, the storm was breaking. And I knew they were going to move early with the front. Uh, so I moved in and uh, set up as quiet as I could. Got in there and nothing moved until about sunset. And then all of a sudden, bucks started getting up out of the bedding area all over the place and coming in my direction. I was just getting glimpses of them and they all looked small. But uh, I got, they were coming in quick, so I got the camera turned and aimed into the little opening, the only spot I can shoot because how thick it is. And uh, the first thing to come out was this little velvet buck, and he was tempting, but he was too young. I've never shot a velvet buck, and he had some weird looking antlers. But uh, let him go, and as he's going back, he something come running up from behind him, and he kind of stepped on the gas. And all of a sudden, uh, a big buck come running right into the shooting lane, just real fast. And I didn't really have time to look at him just to say, he's a shooter. And I just pulled back and shot him. I didn't say much on the film after the shot because all the rest of the deer just hopped around and were looking around and stayed there for a while and I didn't want to spook them. There wasn't a good blood trail because of the rain, but the arrow looked like it smoked it perfect, at least uh, from my view. I haven't looked at the camera footage yet, but uh, it looked like a great shot. And uh, when I got down there, the arrow was soaked in blood, bright red blood. But uh, I didn't find a blood trail right away, leading away. Uh, probably because everything was soaked and, and wet. Um, so I got uh, my friend uh, Mario is coming over, and uh, we're going to go out and look for it right now. I don't want to leave it overnight and have the coyotes uh, eat it on me. Wish me luck. Uh, it's a nine pointer. Uh, he's not as big as I thought he was, but he's fairly decent. It's quite the tracking job. I thought I nailed him. It looks like I was a little further back. Uh, he probably got uh, 300 yards, and we lost the trail several times. Really had to, uh, really had to search. And it wasn't until he got into these cattails that we could uh, really start keeping on the blood a little better. Get a little better video and pictures of him in the morning. Now we got a long track getting this thing out of here. <laughs> yeah, we do. Thanks, Mario. <laughs> no problem. I guess I owe you. <laughs> All right. This is the third day of uh, Wisconsin's bow season. It, it's uh, September 15th. I went in to hunt one of my uh, favorite. Uh, Big buck bedding areas on a public marsh, and uh, on my way in, I could see that there was a lot of sign, a lot of nice rubs, and uh, big tracks coming in and out. And I knew there was going to be bucks in there. I set up about 75 yards from the from the buck beds on a crosswind, and uh, a little before sunset, the uh, bucks started rising up out of their beds, and they were hard to see because it's really dense cattails and and uh, marsh. But uh, you can't really see them until they're in a little hole underneath you. And that's my only shooting lane. And uh, first buck out was uh, some sort of weird antlered uh, velvet buck. He had like three spikes on one side and two on the other, all in velvet. And he was acting weird. Ran through the uh, shooting lane and I could hear something else coming up behind him. And uh, just as I put my uh, release on the string, this guy jumps out, and I just drew back and shot him. The arrow looked great, but uh, it really wasn't. It was a little further back than I thought it was. I got liver and one lung, and it ended up being an all-night track job. And uh, 
almost dawn by the time I got them out of the woods. <laughs> uh, I go in mobile, uh, stand and sticks on my back, and uh, I only hunt there a couple times a year, and that's what keeps it good and fresh. In this show, we talked about how rain can soften leaves and uh, make for a quiet approach to your hunting spot. But there's a lot of advantages that rain has other than just sound. Uh, rain can give you a free hunt. I mean, you look at hunt, uh, humans and they think so much vision oriented. They don't really think about scent uh, as much as they should. And human scent, ground scent, can stay there for almost two weeks. Um, so does deer will know you've been there. Well, you get a good rain, that changes all that. So planning your hunts around rain, going in to some of your good spots just before a rain can be like getting a free hunt uh, because the deer never knew you were there. Um, the rain washes out your scent if it's a good heavy rain. Uh, another factor is trail cameras. You're going to go put trail cameras in, in areas where you hunt, you're generally damaging that hunt. And uh, I hardly ever recommend that. But if you're going to do it, how about going in just before it rains, putting up those tra trail cameras, and then backing out and not picking them up till just before it's going to rain. And then it's just a trail camera they are taking pictures, and your human sense not there. Hmm. Next hunting season, when you start thinking about disadvantages, and all your hunting partners are saying it's too hot, it's too windy, it's too rainy. Try to have an open mind and think about what kind of advantages you get you get from those disadvantages and where you could hunt that would help you in that situation. I hope you enjoyed the show. I enjoyed making it. Uh, and see you next time.